everyone and welcome back to another new video of pen paper physics this time i am here with spherical mirrors and in this video i will teach you about the different parts of spherical mirror as well as the rules to draw the ray diagrams in spherical mirror but before we go into the details of the video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you get the notification whenever i upload a new video now let's move into the video Let us consider a hollow sphere as shown over here. This is a hollow glass sphere. We are cutting a part from it and from this part we are going to make a spherical mirror. If the reflecting surface is bulged outward as shown over here, then this mirror is called convex mirror. That means the reflecting surface is pulsed outwards. Now here I am showing you the 2D representation of a convex mirror. We can draw it in opposite way also. It depends on us that in which way we are going to draw the convex mirror and don't forget to mark the non-reflecting surface as shown over here. Now we will consider another case where the inner surface of the hollow glass sphere is silvered. That means the reflecting surface is bulged inwards. This kind of mirror is called concave mirror. Now I am showing you the 2D representation of this concave mirror. You can draw it in opposite way also but same here. Don't forget to mark the non-reflecting surface. But how we will draw these spherical mirrors in exam? What should be the measurement taken? Now it's up to you which measurement you want to take and draw. But if you ask me, I will give you a measurement that always I follow. We will take a radius of 6 cm and draw an arc as shown over here. Next we will mark the non-reflecting surface and the center of the circle is marked as C. Now I will draw a straight line passing through C which will intersect the mirror at a point P. If I place a scale over here, you will see that the distance between C and P is 6 cm as we have taken the radius at 6 cm. Exactly at the middle, mark another point and name it as F. That means 6 cm radius and we will mark it as C and P. And at 3 cm we will mark another point which will be named as F. The same method we will follow to draw the convex mirror. We will take the 6 cm radius, we will mark the non-reflecting surface after drawing the arc and again we will name the center as C and draw a straight line and again since the radius is 6 cm at 3 cm we will mark F. And also, don't forget to mark P. Next, we will learn about different parts of spherical mirror. In the beginning only, I have shown you that the spherical mirrors are actually part of a whole hollow glass sphere. Now, these spheres must have a center. This center of the sphere from which the mirror is sliced is called center of curvature. But remember, the center of curvature is an imaginary point and it is outside the mirror. Next, we will learn about radius of curvature. Radius of curvature is basically the radius of the sphere of which the spherical mirror is a part. But radius of curvature is also an imaginary line and it lies outside the mirror. Over here, you can see AC and PC. Both are radius of curvature. Next, we will learn about the pole. The pole is the geometrical center of the spherical surface of the mirror. And it is the only part of the mirror that lies on the surface of the mirror. And last but not the least, principal axis. Principal axis is the imaginary line 
that passes through the center of curvature and the pole of the mirror. After all these points, I would like to add another point over here that in case of a concave mirror, the center of curvature C and the pole P lies in front of the reflecting surface. That means on the real side of the mirror. Whereas in case of a convex mirror, the C lies behind the mirror. That means on the virtual side of the mirror. Keep this in mind because you are going to need this concept when you are going to learn about the rules to draw the ray diagrams. Now we will learn about the focus of a concave mirror. The incident rays over here are parallel to principal axis. After reflection, these rays will converge and meet at a point on the principal axis. That point on the principal axis is called focus. And since the rays are converging, concave mirror is also known as converging mirror. The distance between the focus and the pole of a mirror is known as focal length, which is denoted by small f. According to picture, PF is the focal length and PC is the radius of curvature. Another point to be noted over here, the focal length is exactly half of the radius of curvature. That is the reason when I gave you the measurement, we took the center of curvature at 6 cm and I have marked the focus over there at 3 cm. Next we will learn about the focus of a convex mirror. The focus of a convex mirror is a point on the principal axis from which the light rays incident parallel to the principal axis appear to drive edge. In case of a convex mirror also, we have the incident rays parallel to principal axis. After reflection, they will diverge. But if you extend them backwards, you will see they are meeting at a point on the principal axis. That point is known as focus of the mirror. But since the focus is on the virtual side of the mirror, that means behind the mirror, the light rays are not actually meeting at this point. It appears to diverge from that point. Here in this case also, the distance between the pole and focus is known as focal length and denoted by small letter f. The focal length pf is also half of the radius of curvature pc. That is the reason in case of convex mirror also, I have taken the radius as 6 cm and marked the point F at 3 cm. But how to draw these diagrams in exam? First we will take a concave mirror with the measurement mentioned earlier. Now I will draw two parallel rays. Parallel to whom? Parallel to principal axis. After that, I will join both the point of incidence and the focus which is already marked over there. So these are my reflected rays passing through the focus. But don't forget to give the arrows because no arrow, no marks. Similar method, I will follow for the convex mirror also. First I will draw two parallel rays as shown over here. But now to draw the reflected ray, what I will do is, I will join the focus and the point of incidence but with a dotted line. Since the focus is on the virtual side of the mirror and without changing the alignment of the line, I will extend the rays. We have followed a different method because it's easier to draw in exam. Same method I will follow for other incident rays. Join the point of incidence and the focus with the dotted line and without changing the alignment, extend them forward. So these are my two final diagrams. Make sure you check all the arrows properly given or not. Now we will learn about the rules to draw the ray diagram. First we will learn about PF rule. P means parallel rays. F means focus. As you can see in the picture, the rays parallel
parallel to principal axis after reflection pass through the focus in case of a convex mirror the rays parallel to principal axis after reflection appears to pass through focus or diverge through focus since the rays are diverging when incident on convex mirror it is known as diverging mirror now let's do it on paper that means how will you do it in exam first draw a concave mirror and the principal axis mark c p and f with the measurement mentioned earlier next draw a parallel ray incident on the mirror and then join the point of incidence and the focus and then extend draw a parallel ray incident on the mirror now to draw the reflected ray what i will do is i will join the focus and the point of incidence but with a dotted line and without changing the alignment of the line i will extend the rays so this is a final ray diagram for pfe next rule that we are going to learn is now fp f means focus p means parallel any ray passing through focus in case of a concave mirror will reflect parallel parallel to whom parallel to principal axis in case of a convex mirror the rays are not actually passing through the focus but it will appear to pass through the focus so any ray appear to pass through the focus after reflection becomes parallel to principal axis as you can see over here now let's do this also on paper on a concave mirror i will draw a ray passing through f and from the point of incidence i will draw a ray parallel to principal axis in case of a convex mirror i will draw a ray through focus with a dotted line from the surface of the mirror i will extend the line without changing the alignment as shown over here this is my incident ray now from the point of incidence i will draw a ray parallel to principal axis that's it so here is our final one next rule that we will learn over here is cc here both the cs represent the center of curvature as you can see over here any ray passing through center of curvature of a concave mirror after reflection follows the same path in case of a convex mirror the rays appears to pass through the center of curvature after reflection follows the same path as you can see over here let's do it on paper now I will draw a ray passing through the center of curvature of a concave mirror and give two ways are shown over here since the light rays are taking the same path in case of a convex mirror since the ray appears to pass through the center of curvature i will draw a dotted line through the center of curvature towards the mirror and from the reflecting surface without changing the alignment i will draw the incident ray as shown here and give a two way arrow since it is also the reflected ray so here is the final output the last rule that we will learn over here is pir p for pole i for angle of incidence and r for angle of reflection in this rule the light ray is incident at pole and it reflects back making same angle with the principal axis that means i is equals to r but for drawing any ray diagram we need any two rules most of the cases we use pf fp and cc pir rule is not used that much does spherical mirror obey laws of reflection what do you think let us now discuss about it let us consider a spherical mirror over here with the center marked as c and a tangent drawn on it the angle 
between the radius of curvature and the tangent is 90 degree. This is the basic concept of geometry. If we closely observe and take a small part of the sphere, we will see that the length of AB and the length of the tangent CD is almost same. That's why the angle between the radius of curvature and CD is equal to the angle between the radius of curvature and the length of the mirror AB. That means the radius of curvature is not only normal on the tangent but also normal on the surface of the mirror. Let us now take an example of concave mirror where a parallel ray is incident on the mirror. Now if you want to find the angle of incidence, we need to draw a normal on the point of incidence. As we just discussed, if you draw a line passing through the center of curvature and extend it till the point of incidence, it will be a normal drawn on that point. So the angle between the normal and the incident ray is I and the angle between the normal and the reflected ray which is passing through focus is the angle of reflection R. And as mentioned in the laws of reflection, this angle of incidence is equal to angle of R. I can give you another example that will prove that the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. When a ray appears to pass through the center of curvature on a convex mirror, the angle of incidence is 0 degree since the light ray is incident normally and the light ray takes the same path that means it is reflected normally. Therefore, the angle of reflection is also 0 degree. So, it proves the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and we can say the spherical mirror for based the laws of reflection. Oh, you are back. Hopefully my video have helped you in clearing your doubts. If you have any suggestion or if you want to suggest me any kind of topic that you want me to make a video on it, please write it in the comment section. I am waiting for you over there. If you want to suggest me anything or if you want to see the latest updates on my channel, then please follow my official Facebook page and my Instagram account. The links are given in the description box below. Please follow. Till then, thank you very much everyone. Hope to see you in the next video. Please stay well, stay safe. Bye-bye.